Hi, welcome. Um, today I will continue my little series about Azure DevOps. Um, turns out that people is pretty, are pretty interested in it. And um, I'm trying to um, do more content in the next time coming up. So today I want to talk about um, libraries in Azure DevOps, which is something from my experience that a lot of people don't use. They don't even know about this. So I will explain what it is, what it does and how to use it. Uh, this video also will contain um, explanation of uh, Azure DevOps libraries in combination with Azure Key Vault. So if you're interested, keep going. So let's switch over to my screen here. Um, so I already prepared um, Azure DevOps organization and I have a project called Demo here. Just a quick uh, update for you guys if you didn't know. Um, for the time being recorded, like I think one month ago, Microsoft finally added the ability to add organization images. So if you didn't know that, here you go. So now you can have the Coding Freaks logo. That's nice. But let's go to the project. This project is um, pretty empty. I'm only using repos and pipelines. Um, also, uh, I have disabled the creation of classic uh, CI pipelines and release pipelines. So that's not possible anymore in this one. So we are going to use YAML only in this demo, which is the new way to go. But let's talk first about this section here, which is called library and what it is. So what this section is all about um, in Azure DevOps, you can store variables inside a project so that different pipelines can access those variable variables. Uh, the second one, the second thing you can manage here are uh, secure files, which means oh, just files. You can upload them um, and those files are for some reason considered by yourself to be um, sensitive in terms of information. And later in your pipelines, you can use the secure files. I will go over this um, uh, in this uh, tutorial too, but we will start with variable groups. So what a variable group is, it's pretty much a directory. Um, you can have several of them. And in this directory or a container, name it as you will. And in this container, you can collect variables. So the first step is to create a variable group. So let's do it. Okay, so we give it a name like sensitive uh, data or whatever. Um, it's good thing, in my opinion, to don't use um, blank spaces. Use uh, just something like this, sensitive data, whatever. Remember, this name is unique only inside of the project. So if you can have multiple sensitive data variable groups in different projects, named the same. Give it a subscription, I will leave it out here. We will talk about this section in a minute, because this is even better. Um, but let's talk about now um, how to add a variable. Let's just do it. Okay, and let's call my variable test and give it a value of one, two, three, four. So as you might have seen, here is an option to lock this value. Currently it's not. Um, so this means that if I lock this value here, now uh, this value isn't visible to anybody. So if I save this right now, I have it now, I have this value. If I unlock the value, it's, go it's gone. Even I, who created this, is not able to unlock this value. So let's do one, two, three, four. Again, lock it, and that's it. The next thing you should do as soon as you created this uh, is to give pipelines later permissions. Let's click on this. Uh, here is no pipeline um, uh, present. But let's create a pipeline in our source code so that we can set the permission here. Okay, let's hop over to VS Code. I already created a little structure, which is everything related to Azure DevOps is in the .Azure DevOps folder. Here I have a pipelines folder inside and here I have my CI YAML pipeline. So let's create, let's zoom a little bit and let's create like the minimum. Um, I will create the pool or define the pool with the VM image option setting to, let's use Ubuntu latest. Thank you. Uh, let's also go and disable automatic run, 
which is trigger none, which means this pipeline will not run automatically. I have to run it manually, which I want to do here. And then I would normally go and have my variables section in the pipeline. And I normally would go and, uh, and uh, do something like name is test and value is one, two, three, four. But this is exactly what I don't want to do because this value now is um, somehow sensitive. Let's say it's a password or whatever it is. So I don't want to do that. So let me remove this for the second, save my pipeline. So it has no tasks, nothing, no steps, uh, sorry, nothing in it. And I will just commit and push this value, create it, um, my first pipeline. So commit and push. Now it's up there. Let's go over to Azure DevOps again and let's go to the pipelines section. Uh, leave this for a moment, create a new pipeline. Uh, yes, create a new pipeline. It is part of my Azure repo. It is part of my demo repo and it's uh, existing in a YAML file. So I go here and then on my main branch, uh, there is a pipeline in the folder. I create it and continue. And now he just took it and uh, I only will save the pipeline. And let's go and rename the pipeline. Um, no, let's leave it as it is. So it's a demo pipeline. So now in my pipelines, you can see here it didn't run. Uh, it didn't run. So now it's just there. It's present. Let's favorite it. So let's go over to the library now. Um, go here into my sensitive variable group, go to the permissions, add the demo pipeline. And by doing this, what I say is this demo pipeline is in principle able to access this variable group. You can do this later too. When the pipeline runs, it will say in the run, hey, I'm not permitted to access this variable group. Should I be permitted? But it's um, more uh, clean uh, to do it in the definition of the variable group to allow the pipeline. Okay, now the pipeline is allowed to access this variable group. Okay, head over to my, where's my VS code here. Let's go here. And because we want to use the variable from the variable group, what we do is we say group, if I can type, and now you refer to the name, which was sensitive data. So this is all you need to do in order to tell your CI pipeline, hey, CI pipeline, go to Azure DevOps, go to the library, search for a variable group with this name. And now every variable which is present in this variable group is available in my pipeline. So let me prove this. Let's go over to the steps. And um, let's create a simple PWSH step. And then, yeah, kind of, but not write host this. Let's write host the value of test is test, which is we are accessing a pipeline variable without defining it explicitly in this pipeline, as you can see. So normally, when we define just to repeat this for in, in case you didn't know this, this is, um, um, this is, uh, what, what do we call it? A sample variable and we call, we give it the name of hello world. So what we can do now is we can do two steps. The value of a sample, let's do it this way. So that's, written a little bit cleaner and the value of test is test and this is sample with a capital T so we can easily distinguish them. So this is a variable we defined directly in the variable section of the pipeline and this is one we get uh, indirectly by using the variable group. This is what we need to do. So what I will say is let's do a display name of um, write variables and this is uh, I think this is enough. So this should be 
a decent step in our pipeline. Let's try it out. Um, uh, step edit, whatever, commit and push. So now this change is in my Azure DevOps. So now go to the pipeline and now let's try to run this pipeline and go to main, okay, and run the pipeline. So let's see if this is working. Uh, let me see if this runs quick enough or if I need to pause the video. We will see this in a second. Mm, yeah, it's running. Check out, write variables. So here we go. And now, as you can see here, this is my output. And what you can see here is the value of sample is hello world. And interestingly enough, the value of test is, hmm. So we can see one, two, three, four. Uh, he is hiding this value. So um, what I mean by he is or it, it's the pipeline itself understands that this value comes from a variable group and is secured. And this is why the value is not written out. Let me see if I can trick it. Um, the variable is, uh, so how can I do it? Um, uh, can I do um, x equals uh, test plus uh, empty? And can I do this one? I don't even know if this is possible. Trying to trick it because X is not secured. And I don't know if he's smart enough to detect that I'm com combining something with X. Let's see what happens now. Let's uh, run a new, run new, run. So let's see how it looks now. <clears throat> Should be pretty fast because uh, hopefully he, he can reuse the already existing machine. Yeah, there he goes, write variables. Oh, and he says X is uh, not a variable. Yeah, because I'm pretty dumb. This is not a pipeline variable now. This is a normal PowerShell variable in the script. So let's change this one. Mm, fixed typo. Do it again. Um, and then run a new one. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, he did it now. And this time he is smart enough. You can see he um, he's still hiding the value from us um, with, with stars because he understand he, he still understands that X, which I'm outputting now, um, is uh, coming from a secret value. So he still hides it, which is pretty interesting. But believe me, the value is there. So let's go back to the library after we checked it. And now uh, what you can see is at the current moment in this uh, variable group, you can have a secure storage um, of uh, secret values in um, your Azure DevOps directly. I'm not even sure if Microsoft by using this section internally uses a key vault, I guess that the key vault is involved here, which is managed by Microsoft. But anyways, what also is interesting besides the pipeline permission is the security uh, section, because you want to ensure that only this is a default setting, that only um, uh, certain roles or built in roles are able to read this value. So what you can uh, do here, you can stop inheritance if you want to say something like, hey, I don't want the developers which are invited to this project to be um, able to read this value. Um, but as, as soon as you secure this with the lock, as I told you uh, some minutes ago, this is not a risk anymore. You just need to um, think of locking it because now not even me who created this is able to read the value. So what's interesting is you don't want to allow certain people to unlock it and um, to delete the value in this way, because then your pipelines won't, will stop work. Okay, so this is uh, the first uh, step in variable groups. Um, the second one, which I want to go to is to talk about this option now. 
Um, so what I prepared, let me jump over quickly to my Azure environment. So what I prepared is I have um, Azure Key Vault here in place. This is an Azure Key Vault. Um, and I created a secret in this Azure Key Vault test. So in Azure uh, itself, I can go here because I'm, I have the rights um, here. And I can show the secret value, with, with, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. I can have lifetime, like expiration of something. Um, and I the best thing about this is now I'm using a key vault which is owned by me, which means I can have my robust access control uh, defined in Azure. And with that in place, now this option gets interested. interesting. So what I need to set up in my Azure DevOps, the same, um, by the way, which I need to set up for having CD pipelines targeting Azure, I had covered this in another tutorial, is I will need to go to the project settings and ensure that there is a service connection and I already defined one, which is, as you might remember, this thing is a service principle in Azure uh, Entra ID. So if you don't know what Entra ID means, Entra ID is currently in process to being replacing the name Azure AD. So Azure AD will become Entra ID. So in my tutorials, I will refer to Entra ID from now on. So Entra ID um, has the service principle, which means a user which is not a human being. It's the best way to handle this. And this service principle is uh, allowed to read secrets from Azure Key Vault. And by doing this, by having this in um, my service connections, now I can go over to my demo project to the library here. And I can prove here in the library and tell him, no, 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 don't do it. Don't manage the uh, secret values by yourself. Go and use Azure DevOps. By clicking it, he says, when you toggle this uh, to Azure, not Azure DevOps, uh, when you toggle this, he's telling me um, that now uh, he will delete the values which he manages. So it's either the one or the other. That's basically what it is. Be careful with this if you have already variables. So I confirm this and now he's asking me for an Azure subscription and a key vault. So the subscription is basically now he's loading here um, and let me wait if he's doing it because this can take a while in my case this one is the important one because this is a available service connection means uh, he saw the service connection in his project so this is where i told him how to access azure and i'm telling him use this one and now he's searching for key vaults in this scope so as this service connection user, he's going to Azure, wherever this service connection is heading to in Azure, and he's searching for key vaults. So he will have this demo key vault here. Let me double check that this is exactly the key vault I'm heading for. And this is now, oh, I didn't mean to do it. So now I can add variables from the key vault into here. So if I go to add, he's finding my test variable in the key vault and I can say I want to use this here and I can save this. So okay now the name is test lowercase let me double check my source code and it is still test lowercase so it should work because as you can see the name didn't change. So the name is still test lowercase test which is the same name I used as a secret name in Azure key vault and now I'm just, you know, pointing to another store for uh, the secret value. That's all I do. So in principle, my pipeline should still run. Let's check if I do it, run the main and check the job. Let's see if it's working still. So as you can see, Download secrets from AKV is now a new step. Write values. It's still hidden from us. And let me see. I've got an idea just right now. X is, um, uh, do I have um, dot length uh, on this? 
uh, is it length in PowerShell? I don't even know, but this is a live demo, okay? Uh, so let's do a little bit different test. The length is, let's call it length in a second. Uh, and let's see if this is actually working. So let me open a terminal in PowerShell here. What happens if I say x dot length? It's one. So it basically works. I hope that this is now returning four because one, two, three, four is four characters long. And I just double checked if PowerShell is doing it. The length is length. Cool. So let's see if this works. Uh, trying to trick part two. Uh, commit and push. And now let's execute this. What I want to show here is I want to prove that the value is actually um, taken uh, from Azure Key Vault in the correct way. So let's see if he does that. <clears throat> Initializing, downloading the secret, checking, writing the variable. No, something was read, I guess. So what's going on? Length is blah, blah, length. The term length is not as a name of function script file. Yeah. So he is not probably this is a secure string. Um, let me see um, what uh, is possible. Let me pause the video for a second and I'm trying to uh, trick this. Well, I failed. Um, so I tried different stuff like this here. And in between, I saw that um, he is um, interpreting this value as obviously not a string, but a number. Um, so uh, it's not easy for me to come around this. Um, uh, I don't know if this is going to happen because he obviously in PowerShell um, has, you know, hidden this, this variable completely and it's only um, able to read it. So it's done pretty clever. If you know a way, to show this value for debugging purposes, let me know. Um, but you know, to be honest, it is actually a good idea not to have this ability. Let me remove this um, to uh, mangle around with this variable because it is a secure variable. Okay, now it's coming from the key vault, and this is exactly what I expected to do not to show it um, in the pipeline because this would be dangerous uh, here. But, anyways. This is now um, working. Uh, let's test out this one a little bit more. What happens if we go and uh, tell the variable here, the current version, that it should be expired here? Can I do this uh, into the back, which is currently is 29th? Let's go to, um, it's now this time. Let's go to, which is it? Oh, my time zone. 1530. So he's going to 15, which is okay. Apply. So now this thing should be outdated. Let me see. Refresh. It's expired. Hopefully. What happens now to the pipeline is the question. Um, if I expire this, run new, run. Let's see if he's seeing this. And I would say it's failing here because this is now expired. Um, and as you can see, it's not doing as, as quickly as it was. So now he's skipping this. What happens if I write it out? Yeah. So, uh, oh, this is still the wrong one. I uh, forgot to do it. Um, Pre-download. And as you can see here, pre-job download and then secrets. Download secret value for test. Oh, he did it. So let me uh, just quickly commit my change um, back to normal, whatever that means. Um, and I'm pretty curious now, I never tested this, uh, to be honest. I expected it to fail on the download task. Let's give it one more try with the new one. And I'm not sure if this thing is now actually outdated. Um, so the variable or if it takes some time 
to see that this is now going. So this is strange. It should fail here to download the secret, but this could be a time issue, timing issue. We will see, uh, or you will see. Try it out for yourself. I re highly recommend if you're using Azure uh, in conjunction with Azure DevOps, I highly recommend that you use this Azure Keyword option. Um, by the way, it's still enabled. It shouldn't be. Can I? Can I disable it? What happens now if I disable it? Let's do it and let's give it one more run. Okay, just one, I swear. So uh, let's try it out. If it's now giving us an error, this is what I expect on the download, to be honest. I want to see that the error occurs, but so what's going on? It takes longer? That's good. So basically, I think this was a timing issue because um, this should be shouldn't be a valid value after this timestamp, and it's still valid. Um, so it might get um, uh, take some time for it to recognize it. Maybe we can see it when we go over to the library back here and try to do this here. And he's seeing tests, and this is disabled and it has an expiration date on it. So it uh, sees the expiration here. And so you separate two tasks, which is using the variables and managing the variables, which is a good idea. And with that, I wanna head over to my library and talk about secure files. So secure files is kind of similar to um, uh, this, this variable groups and the variables, but now we are dealing with, if you will, blob. Okay, so it's just a file. Uh, Azure DevOps doesn't care what the content of the file is. So what people are using this is especially for certificates and stuff like that, because this is the most common thing. For instance, if you have an iOS build pipeline or whatever, you want to have your developer certificate on a secure place, but still you need it in Azure DevOps in a secure place because normally you use this certificates to um, build your project so you will need it so what you will do here is you will upload a secure file from your computer sadly there currently is no option as far as i know to get this file from an azure key vault which would be great because azure key vault has the ability to not only store secrets which are strings but files only uh certificates so that would be even better mm, maybe it comes here as an option Later, we will see. But currently, we have to upload it manually. And let's upload uh, a Coding Freaks logo for uh, just, you know, let's take the YouTube logo, whatever it is. Let's upload it 1.4 megabyte. Okay, maybe not the best thing, but now it's there. And what's important is that you keep track of this name. So with this in place, what you can do is you can uh, go over to your pipeline and um, in order to have this file on your build machine whenever you need it, you can go and use um, a file, which is a step, which is download secure file. And I think, yeah, it's version one. So now you have to uh, define a name, uh, whatever that is for, let's say my secure logo, whatever this is, just the name that you use. And the secure file you use is this thing. So CF underscore YouTube PNG. So that should do it now. And uh, from now on, you basically can access this secure file. In order to access it in the next step, you can go here and let's see, where is my, here's my VS code. And let's say the next step is um, content or secure content is uh, get content and here it is um, it says here give me the secure file path which is just the absolute path where this step downloaded it to and get the raw content and write out write host um, let's say um, secure content length I hope. So let's see how this is working. Uh, let's go over and do secure file, commit and push, and let's run this pipeline now. Let's go over to the pipeline, see if I did everything right or not. 
Uh, oh, he has a fill. Download to file number one. Oh, I have a typo. This is bad. Typo fixed. But maybe it's good to see here in this tutorial again how uh, Azure DevOps communicates errors to you back. So he is showing you here the current branch main has a pipeline CI ML which is invalid and he gives us uh, he gives us even the line which is not so bad. Let's try and refresh. This is bad that he's not seeing that this is now refreshed. But anyways, run it now. And he says download secure file number one. Uh, what is the error here? Um, this is strange because this should be, uh, oh, yeah, I see what I did. Task is missing um, and it should be this way. I just mistyped, or I think it wasn't even me, it was um, uh, Copilot, right? Let me disable uh, for disable globally right now so that it's not typing all the time. So let me do typo again, commit and push. Um, I won't cut it out because that's the normal experience. I think when you go to Azure pipelines, I want to have uh, your um, uh, give you the experience that I have most of the times when I'm debugging Azure pipelines. So it's uh, the same all over again. Let's run it here. Yeah, on the main branch. And now the typo is gone. Thank you. And let's see. Oh, now you see what happens when you don't give the pipeline the permission explicitly. So now what we did is um, we added this secure file. Let me open my library here on the second tab. And what I forgot on the secure files, I forgot and it's not even possible to give the pipeline permission to access the secure file. I don't even know, is it possible? Can I do, oh, here it is on the secure file itself. I could have done it by explicitly doing it here, which I did not, which is bad. And now the pipeline says, hey, you want me to access the secure file, but you, you never allowed this. Do you want to allow this? You click on view here and permit, permit. And now he's permitted to do it. Let's quickly jump over here and watch if this pipeline permission, and you see, he's basically, this button, which you see in the pipeline, is basically adding, adding this permission here to the demo pipeline if and only if the user who is in front of the pipeline run is allowed to do this. So now he says uh, download secret. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm so smart. Let's go over here and re-enable this one and apply. So. Now my pipeline is not working because now my secret is not downloadable, which was the last demo step. I re-enabled the secret. Let's see if it's running now or if now the secret expiration um, throws a stick into our legs. Let's see. So here it is, the pre-jobs, download, checking, right variable. So here is, um, write values and now we get the value here for the length of the file proving that we definitely get access to the file. So this was kind of the demo. Um, so sadly enough, the libraries currently only allow Key Vault, as I said, for um, the variable groups for the secure files, you need to do it here. Um, what you also can do is you can add properties on files, which is just key value pairs, A equals one and B equals two. Let's save it. Okay. So what, and you cannot secure those values as you can see. And I think what you can do, I never use this. Uh, I don't know the case, but I think it's pretty easy uh, to say write host um, maybe we do this uh, secure, uh, my secure logo. Um, and either it's A directly or it's properties A. I will see this. Let's try, let's try it out. I'm just uh, exploring here, uh, trying out props. Let's see if we get the value one out of this if we run the pipeline again. So let's give it a new run and run. 
<clears throat> uh, let's see if we get an error. Come on. Ah, there it is. He's doing this, that. No, it's red. I already saw it. So probably it is my secure AS not. Okay. Um, let's go Azure DevOps secure file uh, properties. Use secure files. And now in the documentation, let's go over here. Consume. Yes. FAQ. Uh, where is it? This is a sample for certificate, as you can see how you um, use the download secure file, which we did, and then you do that. Cool. But what about the props here? Um, is there anybody secure file properties? Cool. So here, password, whatever. And then he says, just encrypt the file with a key. No, that's not the answer. Um, did you figure out this property you used for? Let's do it together. Uh, one year later and docs still haven't been updated. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Let's go over to GitHub. Did we detect something? Oh, it's still open. No documentation and secure file properties. Select library, select, that's exactly what we did. Um, and but what is his suggestion? Select authorized step here should be pipeline permission instead properties. Okay. No documentation and secure files properties. Okay. Contents, secure files for Azure DevOps pipelines, content source. Let's see. Let's get interesting. People have been asking for clarify on what these secure file properties mean. See, uh, for once, we got there the same way I did. Also, secure file interface exposes a properties property. I couldn't find any reference in any pipeline task that actually uses it. Most pipeline tasks only call download secure file, which returns a stream, instead of get secure file that returns secure file instance. Aha, I've actually tested get secure file to ensure the properties map is actually populate. So we have download secure files file, and obviously there's a get secure file. Uh, interesting. And then you can access this. Nothing. So this is kind of, uh, again, not documented, obviously. So um, it's not my fault, I guess. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, uh, you, you see the problem and what you should not do, what was proposed in this, let me point this out, you should not use this um, to add something like uh, password x here which makes no sense because X is not as visible to everybody. So this password for your secure file need to be in a variable group as a password to if it's encrypted or whatever, and then you can go there. Okay, so that was it for today. A little bit of a rabbit hole was included too, as always in my tutorials, sorry. Um, and I did some mistakes, but you know, it makes it more natural, I think, but it should show, it should have shown you that pipelines are basically a good thing, um, or not pipelines, but libraries, sorry, and you should use it. And I will, um, give me feedback if you need more information on that. And other than that, I will continue to make content on Azure DevOps. See you.